Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today, in part 4 of our parallel programming series, we are going to demystify task parallelism in C Sharp. We'll explore how task parallelism helps us in executing tasks in parallel. So, before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button, and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX, that is Parallel Framework Extension Libraries in C Sharp. If you have watched my previous videos, you probably remember this diagram. In those videos, I extensively covered PLinQ and the parallel class. Today, I'll provide a quick overview of task parallelism, which is also part of task parallel library, that is TPL. In future videos, we'll delve deeper into task parallelism. Demystifying task parallelism in Cisha with PFX. Task parallelism in PFX offers a low-level approach to parallelization, providing classes within the system.threading.task namespace for managing parallelizable work units. We learned about PLinQ and Parallel class in previous videos. You must be astonished that PLinQ and Parallel class are internally built on the task parallelism constructed. Within the system.threading.task namespace, there are various classes such as task, task t result, task factory, task factory t result, task scheduler, and task completion. So, the task class helps us manage a unit of work, whereas task t result is used for managing a unit of work with a return value. Next, task factory is for creating the task, whereas task factory t result is used for creating task and continuation with the same return type. Next, we have task scheduler that helps us to manage task scheduling, while task completion source gives us the control for managing a task workflow manually. Now, let's talk about what a task is. A task is nothing but a lightweight object for managing a parallelizable unit of work. It leverages the CLRS thread pool, that is common language runtime thread pool, avoid the overhead of dedicated thread creation, thereby enhancing efficiency. We can leverage tasks for various activities, such as scheduling tuning, establishing parent-child relationships, cooperative cancellation, waiting on tasks without signaling constructs, attaching continuation tasks, scheduling based on multiple antecedent tasks, propagating exception, and implementing local work queues. Now let's discuss one by one. When we say scheduling, tuning, what does it mean? In this context, task allows for fine tuning of scheduling, optimizing the order and allocation of work units. Next, we have establishing parent-child relationships. So task can be organized hierarchically with parent task managing child tasks, facilitating a structured parallelism. Next, we have cooperative cancellation. What does it mean? It means task support cancellation mechanism, allowing for the graceful termination of work unit based on cooperative behavior. Next, waiting on task without signaling construct. So task enable waiting for completion without the need for explicit signaling mechanism, thereby simplifying synchronization. Next, we have attaching continuation task. What does it mean? Task can be linked to continuation task enabling sequential execution or dependency based workflow. Next, scheduling based on the multiple antecedent tasks. What does it mean? Task supports scheduling based on the dependency with multiple antecedent tasks. So, it enables complex execution pattern. Next, we have propagating exception. What does it mean? Task handle exception gracefully, propagating them through the task hierarchy for centralized error handling. And last not but the least, implementing local work queues. The task utilizes local work queues to optimize the creation and execution of child tasks, thereby reducing contention, overhead, and improving efficiency. How to create task and start in Cisha with PFX? There are two ways of creating task. One way, one step process. Here we are going to utilize task.factory.start new method. It will create a task and start in a single step. So what we need to do? We just need to call task.factory.start new method and pass in an action delegate. And that's why I wrote over here task.factory.start new and here I have mentioned action delegate. Here I have written task.factory.start new. This is nothing but a method call to start a new task using the task.factory class. So this method takes a delegate that represents the code to be executed asynchronously. And here I have used this action delegate. And here action delegate I have written in the form of lambda expression that represents an anonymous function that takes no argument and simply writes hello learn and enjoy greeting from a task into console window with the help of console.writeLine statement. Now come to the second way, two step process. Here we are going to utilize task constructor and a start map. For the step number one, step number one is to instantiate a task object. How we are going to instantiate a task? For that, I have used new operator. That's what I have written where task is equal to new task. And here I have passed this action delegate. So this action delegate I have written in the form of the lambda expression that represents an anonymous function that takes no argument and simply prints Hello, learn and enjoy greetings from a task into console window with the help of console.writeLine state. 
in a step number two we need to start the task here we have two options start method and run synchronously method when we are going to use the start method it will make sure that the task gets executed asynchronously and when we use run asynchronously method it will make sure the task run synchronously so both methods are designed to start the task but one execute the task asynchronously and the other synchronously okay so let's switch to the visual studio and see all these things in action okay so here we are on visual studio here we are going to see the demo of the task parallelism specifically how to create task and how to start the task for that what i have done i have created one console application named task parallelism demo here we have program.cs file program.cs file first of all i have added this name space using system using system.threading.task then there is a class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application here first of all i have printed this statement into console window with the help of console.writeline step what i have printed task parallelism demo how to create task and start so here we are going to see two way how we are going to instantiate and start the task one way one step process here we are going to utilize task.factory.start new method so here i have written this task.factory.start new method and here i have passed this action delegate and action delegate i have written in the form of lambda expression that represents an anonymous function that takes no arguments and simply writes hello learn enjoy greetings from a task generated from one step prompt. that's how it is going to get printed into console window this statement will instantiate a task and also start the task asynchronously that's how we are going to get this message printed into console window now come to the second way two step process here we are going to utilize task constructor and start method so here as a part of step number one what i'm going to do instantiating a task object using task constructor that's what i have written where task is equal to new task and here i have passed this action delegate and action delegate I have written in the lambda expression that represents an inverse function that takes no parameter and it is just going to print this statement into console window hello learn and joy greeting from a task generated from two step process. here this statement basically instantiating a task but here the task has not been started we need to start the task that we are going to do with the help of a step number two so here i am going to utilize this start method of the task class. that's what i have written task dot start method it will start the task asynchronously that's how this program is constructed let me execute this program and show this output to you okay so output got appear into console window task parallelism demo how to create task and start hello learn and joy greetings from a task generated from one step process hello learn and joy greetings from a task generated from two step process. both statement got printed from one step process and two step process. so that's how we are going to create a task and start the task the first option we have created a task and executing a task in single step but two step process i have created a task first and then i have started the task with the help of a start method now just close this let me do one thing i just need to you know comment this task dot start and then i'm just going to uncomment this task dot run synchronously what it will do instead of execution of the task in asynchronously it will start executing this task synchronously manner let me go and execute this okay so output got appear into console window you see this statement got printed hello learn and joy greetings from a task generated from one step process hello learn and joy greetings from a task generated from two step process. so one we have executed asynchronously and second one we have executed synchronously but we are getting this same output over here right so this is the way how we are going to create a task and start the task Okay, so that brings me to end up my session. To sum up, in this video, we delve into the world of task parallelism in C-sharp using PFX. We explored how task parallelism offers a low-level approach to parallelization, providing powerful tools within system.threading.task namespace. We discussed the various classes of it. We learned about the key feature of task, including their ability to manage work units efficiently. Finally, we discussed two ways to create and start tasks in C-sharp using PFX. The one step process with task.factory.start new method and the two step process involving task instantiation and start. So stay tuned for more insight into mastering parallel programming. That's all for this video, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.